Hi guys, thanks for watching this video from Manchester Midi School. If you like what you see, then um, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, we've got plenty of other tutorial videos available on our channel. Uh, in this video, what I'd like to show you is another little tweak made available to Push One since the introduction of Ableton Live 9.5. So one of the main draws of Push Two is that you can um, manipulate, you can load samples and slice them up using the um, the Push Two interface, something you've not been able to do previously. Um, and although that behavior isn't immediately available using push one, there is a little workaround which allows you to slice up your samples once you've loaded them and trigger the individual slices much in the same way uh, as push two. Maybe not quite as flexible, maybe not quite as much fun functionality, but certainly it gets you, I'd say, probably about 80% of the way there. So I'm just going to use push to browse for some samples. So we're going to the places section. I'm going to go to a samples folder that I've got in my places. Somewhere down here. There we go. Oh, this nice vinyl break. Remember, this button allows you to audition or not. Uh, so I'm just going to load that. And by default, the sample is loaded into an instance of the new Simpler device. But what it's done, it's loaded it into Simpler in classic mode, which, as we already know, the sample, if it's a short well-cut sample, will be warped within Simpler to fit the tempo. Uh, of your live project. So although this vinyl break, uh, I think it's about 110 beats per minute, it's been warped so it fits 128. And whichever button I press will get a different pitch, but it'll be synced up uh, to the tempo. Now, what I can do is manually switch over with the mouse to either one-shot mode. You see, I just have to hit the pad once. And as the name suggests, it's a one shot. I don't have to have my finger held down. And now if we click on slice, you can see that um, the sample has been automatically sliced, uh, sliced up according to the, you know, the transient content that lies analyzed. And now we can trigger each individual slice. From push. You notice that I had to use the mouse to get there. Um, I would have to use the mouse to do to uh, do other bits and pieces as well. Um, but what I'd like to do is to show you how you can, first of all, create a rack, and secondly, have that uh, as a default option when choosing a sample from the push interface to allow you to select the ability to slice up samples directly from push rather than having to use the mouse. So let me just delete that. What I need to do is go instruments. So we have to set this up initially using the mouse, but thereafter uh, we'll be all good to go from, from push. Um, so just double click to load a simpler. And you can either use the shortcut command in G, control G on the PC, or you can just right click on the simpler title bar and click on group. So this will place simpler in a rack like this. So the instrument rack at the moment just has one chain. And what I'm going to do is just use the shortcut Command and D to duplicate that chain. So we can maybe say, let's change the name of that, Command R for rename. Simpler Classic. Simpler One Shot. A simpler S for Slice or something like that. And you can also colour the chains if you want. I'm just going to leave them as they are. Uh, so, at the moment, you see I'm selecting the different chains, they're each in classic mode. So I'm just going to go to simpler one here and select one shot. You can see that's now different between the two chains. And finally, the third instance of simpler, I'm going to click on slice. There we go. Um, I'm going to click on chain now to open up the chain selector. So at the moment, <clears throat> if I were to say this is a default load a sample, I'll be triggering three instances of Simpler at once, and I don't want that to be the case. I want to be able to choose which instance of Simpler I am triggering. Um, so there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can either 
use these little chaps here to ensure that you know you move the chain selector across by one tiny notch and then you will be triggering the simpler in one shot mode you move it across another notch and you'll be triggering simpler in slice mode uh, the other way that you could do that because sometimes that's a little bit difficult to select using your macro control is you, you place them roughly uh, an equal distance apart right click go distribute ranges equally now you'll have a big band uh, of possible chain selector values where you'll be triggering the simpler in classic mode and then in one shot mode and then in slice mode so I'm going to go with that option but you know either's fine uh, now what you need to do <coughs> If you just expand the macro controls, click on map, and you see this is a mappable parameter. So I'm going to click on the chain selector, I'm going to click on map, come out of that, and if we just navigate to the, the top page, our rotary controls will control those macro controls. You see macro control number one is now called chain selector, so that will allow me to choose classic mode, so just take note of those values up to 41 and you'll be in classic mode between 42 and 84, 5, there or thereabouts. You'll be in one shot mode and then over to the right you'll be in slice mode. Um, the reason I say do those, those wide ranges rather than just one, you know, sometimes it could be a little bit difficult just notch that over by one you need to be a little bit careful so up to you how you set that up it really doesn't matter it's the same same end result so we'll leave that as it is for now we might choose to map further parameters uh, from the simplest to these uh, macro controls I'll, I'll leave that up to you um, but ultimately what we need to do now is we save that as a preset So I'm maybe just going to call that uh, multi-simpler or, or similar. Um, now the important thing here, so let me just uh, get rid of that for the time being. <clears throat> the important bit here is what happens when we choose to load a sample. So if I just, I'm just going to pick a random, random sample. Let's just load that. Okay, so the default behavior when we load a sample uh, into directly into device view is that it will drop that sample into a simpler in classic mode. So what we need to do is we need to change that default behavior. So let me just get rid of that. Now you will find this option under user library, uh, defaults, so I've just close up all the other folders, you see we've got defaults, we've got dropping samples and on device view. And you see there's no presets loaded into, into that at the moment. But if I go to where I have saved my preset, uh, which will be... There we go, just a little cheat. Bring it back up again. Uh, let's go to user library. Let's go to defaults. Dropping samples on device view, and actually, what I can do, I'm pretty sure, is just drag and drop that preset that I've made in there like that. There we go. Just press enter. That's the way to do it. So create your rack first, save it, and then you can just drop it straight into that folder. So it's important just to take note of where I'm at. User library, defaults, dropping samples on device view. Just drag and drop your preset that you've made into there. Okay, let me get rid of that. Right, now let's move over to push. Um, browse to add a device. Let's find that sample again. As you can see my samples are really well organized, not. There we go. So we load that in. Okay, come out of browse mode. Okay, so although it looks like we're in slicing mode, you'll notice that uh, chain selectors on zero here, and 
we're in classic mode, uh, so I can play different pitches of my sample synced up to the tempo. If I move that over to, well, about 50, there or thereabouts, now we're in one-shot mode. It's that same behaviour, it's synced up, we're just playing different pitches. And if we move that over to 127, the chain selector, now we can play the slices given to us by live. Okay, so that's a really, uh, really cool little workaround to allow you to make use of this new slicing mode in Simpler. Now, just a couple of uh, couple of shortcomings, unfortunately. If we take a look, uh, actually, in the rack, uh, you'll notice that the whole uh, the whole loop has been sliced up. The default, you just click on S, is a hundred percent sensitivity. Now, if I rein that in with the mouse, you'll see we get fewer slices to play with. Each slice is going to be longer. So I'd probably recommend leaving the default sensitivity on 100%. I'm pretty sure you can adjust that using push two. There's no way, unfortunately, of adjusting that on push one. If I click on map, you see that is not a mappable parameter, unfortunately. Um, neither is the overall length. Again, yet to receive my push two, but I'm pretty sure that um, you can choose the length of the sample that you're gonna be slicing up. Again, you can't do that. Um, using push one. So it, it does work best using short, well-cut loops. Obviously, if you load a full track in there, um, you're going to have problems. Um, other than that, though, you know, you've got, like I say, probably about 80% of the functionality of push two available from push one. Um, so now, if you can't be, <laughs> can't be bothered with making that preset, uh, what I will do is make that available for download uh, through midischool.com. Uh, of course, if you've got any questions regarding it, setting it up, etc., please don't hesitate to get in touch. Uh, my email address is tom at midischool.com. But uh, again, hopefully, for those of you that have just bought Push 1 or have no, um, no intention of buying Push 2, uh, you can see that you do have a lot of the functionality available to you uh, using just the Push 1 unit.